Hello everyone, it's Unworld here, back again with a new tutorial. And in this video we're going to actually be working with cutscenes. Yeah. This has kind of been requested by a few people before. And I thought it would be a good idea to finally do this. But, word of warning, this is a tiny bit advanced. You're going to have to write some stuff. Because cutscenes are actually written, they're not made in the editor. Well, you, you add a few things in the editor, but most of the cutscene is actually done. Uh, written in text. We're using the same level that I made last time, because it's a nice big level, so we're going to have a big space to move our cameras around, and I'm going to show you a couple things actually. First thing that's going to happen in this cutscene is we're going to have a camera, it's going to start somewhere here, and it's going to basically fly down here, it's going to look at this door, and then the cutscene is actually going to open our door, and then Ron here is going to walk forwards and stand kind of on this trigger basically. So, a couple things you need to start off with. Because we're playing as Ron this time, I've stuffed away Harry in the basically dark corner because we're not going to be using Harry in this game. But he still needs to be there, so... For the, actual, for the game to start, you actually need Harry, so I've added him there. Anyway, what you need though is, if you go to your actor browser, under key points you're going to need Cut Factory. That's the first thing you need to make cutscenes actually work. Add cut factory here. The, the cutscene will also start when the game starts, so you need to add a player start here. We're going to use a player start to point to the, to, uh, to the actual cutscene file that we're making. And we're going to need a couple of things. So let's think about this properly now. We want the camera to start at a position, basically, it has to start somewhere. So let's say it starts up here in the sky. And then it's looking down, down over there, it's facing this way, and then it's going to move down. So, we're going to need a couple actors to make this work. If you go to the actor browser again, on the key point there should be something called look target. You can use any actor really, but the game seems to like this one, so I'll just use this one. Add a look target here, move this up a bit. Okay, it's too close to the wall, so let's move it out in our, in our top view. Okay, so the camera, let's say the camera starts at this point, the camera needs to f this is the first place that the camera is going to fly towards. But you won't notice it, it's going to fly so quick that you won't even notice it. And once it's here, it has to look down here. So we're going to add another one of these guys uh, down here somewhere. Add look target here. Bring this up. Let's actually make it align with our door as well, so it's kind of in front of the door. Yep. And let's move it up. Okay. Let's say our camera starts here. It's looking down that way, and it needs to fly. Basically, uh, it needs to fly and face this door. So we get, we also need another actor to look at. So we can add one here. Add a little target. This is all going to be. Uh, I'll explain all this. It'll be become much more clear when we actually start testing this. Okay. What you need now is, is you need to actually make a cutscene file. So what I did was, if you actually go to the, your game, your Harry Potter 3 game, on the system, there's a folder called cutscenes, and what I did was I just copied one of these files. I pasted it, I just made a copy and then I called it... Uh, 17, so tutorial 17. There's nothing in there, it's 0 kilobytes right now. But yeah, it has to be tut17 and it has to end with .int, just like these files. So just make a copy and then rename it, basically. It's not going to be a big file. Uh, it's only going to come to about uh, down here. So about, yeah, this much. So. Not too difficult. 
it's going to be made of a couple sequences. The first sequence is going to control the camera and the doors. Uh, and then the last sequence is going to basically switch the control from Harry to Ron, so that we play as Ron instead of Harry. Now we actually need to give these guys uh, labels, names, tags. So this guy, if you go under events, we're going to call this point one. Uh, we can call this starting point actually. Oh, let's just call it point one. It's less, less text. Point one, and then we'll call this one. We'll call this target. Actually, we'll call this point two. Point two, and uh, we'll call this one point three. Okay, now in your cutscene file, actually before you go to your cutscene file, you need to connect the player start to your cutscene. So if you go to your player start under events, so go for the event and you type in cut and then underscore and then you need the name of your cutscene which is this head, tutorial 17. We're going to do this step by step, we're going to add something, then we're going to test it. It will give you this error because it's expecting an actor with a tag, uh, but we don't have that yet. Uh, and it actually doesn't matter, this, this error doesn't make the game, it doesn't break the game or anything, it will still work. So just save this. We've got all our points in like the right place, so now we can actually start scripting our cutscene. We can actually move this a bit higher. Yeah, let's compile and save again. So our camera is going to start here. In our cutscene file, what we're going to do is we're going to go like this. We're going to go sequence zero. If you actually look at the cutscenes uh, that were made in the game, you can see they all start with like sequence zero and then a bunch of other sequences basically. This is only going to contain two sequences. It's a simple cutscene. The first thing we want to do is we want to take control of the camera. So we type in pawn tag like this equals camera. Now this basically means that our cutscene is using the camera. What we want to do now is type in line underscore zero and th this is going to be one of our first actions so every action is on, is on a different line and we'll say for line zero we want the target. The first thing you do is you set the target for the camera. Where is the camera looking? The camera is going to be looking here. So you go to events and you take the tag of that guy and then you type in here target fly to e target fly to and then you type in this. You type in the tag of the, of the person that it's going to look at. So the target target is what you're looking at. Fly to is an operation that's going to happen after this. So fly to is when the camera is actually flying, target fly to is when the camera is looking. So target fly to, this just basically means the camera is looking at point two. Now on your next line, next, next line, you go line one equals, here's where you actually make the camera fly. So you go fly to, and the camera has to basically uh, start off here. So this is where it's going to fly to. So we get the tag, point one. Fly to point one. So the camera basically flies here. It doesn't take any time at all. So it's basically instantly there when the level starts. And then you go line underscore two equals. You're going to pause the camera there for like a few seconds. Otherwise you won't see anything happening. We need to know that it's actually working. So we go sleep, three seconds. Now that we've actually saved this, we can test our level, see if it works. So it's going to basically pause up there in the air and then it's going to move to Harry. Now we go, it's up here for three seconds and now control goes back to Harry. 
we're going to switch it to rolling in the end, but we don't need to worry about that right now. So we've got this part done. The next thing we want is, now that the camera fl has flown to this point, we need it to actually look at the door. So what's going to happen is, it's going to fly here, but it's going to be looking at this door. So this is, where, this is the target that it's going to be looking at, and this is the place where it's going to be flying to. So this is, the, this is our target fly to, and this is the actual fly to place that it's going to fly to. That made any sense. So now, just like before, the first thing we want to set is, where is this camera looking? Line 3 equals, so we get our target again, and we say target fly to, in other words, camera's looking at this point. So we get point 3. And then line 4, we say the camera's going to fly to this point over here. And this is going to actually take time. It's not going to be instant like this one. It will take time. It will take about four seconds, let's say, four seconds for the camera to fly. So what's going to happen now is the camera, so the camera started off here. It's looking down there, right? It's flying. And then it's going to be looking down. They're looking towards this thing, basically. Okay? So it was looking here before, but then when it starts flying again, it basically uh, looks toward this way and it turns around, faces the door. And then we're going to also make it sleep for another few seconds so we can see what's happening. Equals sleep three, three more seconds. Alright. Let's actually test this, see if it's working. So it's flying down here, and there we go now, it's looking at the door. It's going to pause for three seconds and then move to Harry. Okay. So we've done those things. The next thing that we're going to do, what I want to show you, is how you can trigger stuff. So it's actually quite simple, you can use a cutscene to trigger anything really. We're going to trigger this door, and I've made this, and it's got a nice little tag. If you go under events, it's called Door 1. So what we want to do is, let's actually reduce the sleep time to 1 second, because we don't want it to pause for so long. Then we go line 6, equals, and we'll type in the word trigger, and then the tag of the door. And then on line 7, you can say pause for like a couple more seconds. Sleep 1. Okay. And if we actually test this, it should now open the door as well. There we go. Goes back to Harry. Okay, so we've got our basic stuff done, we're almost finished. What we need now is, we've done just about everything really. Next thing we need is we need for Ron to move forwards. So we'll end this, we'll actually call this line 8, we'll say, we'll call this We'll, we'll give this a name. This is a keyword as well. We'll call, it, we'll call it Q, and then we'll call it All Done. This is important. Um, we're going to see in the next sequence why this is important. So the next sequence is where we control Ron. So we go sequence one now. Sequence underscore one. Uh, I spelled that right, I think. And then we go pawn tag with camera. This time it's going to be Ron. So this time we control the Ron. What ha what Ron has to do on line zero? This is this is going to be an important line, by the way. You have to type in wait for Q like this. Wait for Q. All done. So by 
this, this cutscene is basically doing a bunch of things. It's taking the camera, it's flying to these points, it's opening the door, and then it calls all of that queue. It calls that all done. And now, you have to make sure that when you take control of Ron, the game waits for this to be finished. The game waits for the first sequence to reach this point before Ron does anything else. Uh, if you don't do this, Ron will start basically doing whatever you, whatever you want Ron to do at the same time as all this stuff, rather than waiting. So this is quite important. And what you want him to do is, you go line 1, line 1 equals, we want him to walk over to, yeah, he has to walk over to this actor here. I've added the trigger here. This trigger is basically a trigger for this uh, mover. It makes it gets this thing moving. Again, you'll know all about that if you've seen the previous tutorials. So the trigger has attack. I called it trigger movers. Okay. I'll actually call this uh, move platform. Okay. So we don't get confused. We get the tag. And then we go here and we say, now that we've got control of Ron, we say, we write this, walk to move platform. And then we say time equals one, so it takes one second for him to walk over to the platform. Okay, now last sequence. This is where we actually switch to Ron. We go sequence. Actually, now let's test this first. Let's test. Let's see if this part is working before we do anything else. Okay. We need to build the level first because I changed the uh, tag. And we can save this. Let's launch the game. See if it works. This might be becoming a long, quite a long video, by the way, guys. It is. It is pretty uh, kind of advanced stuff. So, moving over. Door opens, and Ron walks forward. How awesome is that? I've taken you through the step by step. The last thing we want is we want for uh, the control to switch from Harry to Ron. So last sequence, we go sequence 2, and then we type in here pawn tag equals on exit. I'm not sure what this does, but it works for some reason. Uh, this is basically how the games do it, so I just I, I just took it from from how the developers made this. Pawn tag is on exit, and then on line zero, you type line zero equals. You type in Ron's name, and then you type in switch control to me. So Ron is asking for control, and it switches control from Harry to Ron at this point. Let's test this again. Test this again. See if it's working. Fingers crossed. There we go. Now we're playing as Ron. And uh, there we go. I was waiting for that, I thought it was broken or something. Okay guys, and just for just like we did in our last tutorial. Carpe retractor! We'll carpe retract him over to this platform. Okay. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to do cutscenes. And I hope that by looking into the cutscenes of the game you can probably learn more about how stuff works. This was just basic stuff. Maybe I'll do more about this in the future. But there's really still quite a lot of stuff that you can do with this. So I don't know how or when I'll be covering any of the cutscenes. But if you do have any ideas, if you want to know anything specific, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll try and show you how to actually maybe do some more cutscenes or something. Do something specific that you wanted to do in a cutscene. Other than that, next video I'll either be showing you how to do fog, how to add fog into your levels or I'll be showing you debug mode which is new to this editor and it's only part of this editor basically as far as I can tell thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video